Hey, it's Ed, and somebody asked me a question, and I figured I would do this instead of going out and raking leaves like I should be doing. So, the question was, how do we adjust our equivalent lengths based off of the velocity moving through a duct system? And to set the table, Manual D has a process where we solve for the critical path, and I'm not going through that whole explanation. Seek that elsewhere. Uh, what I am going to do is drill down to one specific topic, and it is the equivalent length of a fitting at a specific velocity. So the way this works, and I guess I am going to go through the whole critical path or longest circulation path. This right here is a quick demonstration. When I say this right here, let me turn that uh, pointer on. This fitting right here, when we look in the charts, Manual D will tell us that it's worth 35 feet. Uh, 10 foot of actual length, 65 feet for the takeoff and where it sits with respect to downstream branches or to an end cap. The actual length of the branch run is 10 feet and then our termination box is worth 80 feet. This is the TEL for the supply side of the system. This was the circulation path that was deemed to have the longest circulation path. We have some charts that you can find on the Manual D speed sheet or look up in the book, and it'll tell us what these lengths are. This is the group two diagram, uh, and below it'll show us what those ELs are. I'm not going into that right now. Uh, let's pretend that you already know this part. And what you want to know is these ELs, where do they actually come from? Well, they come from a database from ASHRAE, number one. Number two, if you look at the top of this, the reference velocity is 900 feet per minute. So the equivalent length represents the pressure drop of the air moving around that fitting at 900 feet per minute. And if you've ever filled out the effective length worksheet, this is part of the process of doing a manual decalculation. Well, there it is. These are examples of the charts that you'll find in manual D. And they are grouped. And let's see, this is a supply. So the reference velocity is gonna be 900 feet per minute. This is a supply reference velocity is going to be 900 feet per minute and surprise 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 this is a supply fitting again 900 feet per minute but when you get into let's see this one is a return air fitting our reference velocity is 700 feet per minute so if you look in the guidance of manual d it's going to max out our trunks on the supply at 900 feet per minute our returns at 700 feet per minute then they give you a little more wiggle room when it comes to our branch runs. But again, another topic, not what we're trying to nail down right now. Highlighted supply fitting, return fitting, and the reference velocity. There's also a reference friction rate. And our friction rate isn't always going to be 0.08. It's going to be a calculated value. And you can hear me rant about that on another video if you so choose. So this is the the math and i'm going to call it the heavy math because any math with letters to me is heavy but there is a process in manual d that they don't highlight but essentially what it is giving us the ability to do is to correct for those equivalent lengths or those pressure drops as they will exist with a different velocity and i think what you'll find is that when you adjust your velocity and the most common thing we do on purpose, I would like to think, is run our air through our trunks at a lower velocity, which will allow us to enjoy a lower pressure drop or a lower EL. That can make it so we can use slightly smaller ductwork and we're still following the guidance of manual D. What happens in reality far too frequently is we shove too much air through too small of a duct and that increases 
the pressure drop or the EL or equivalent length of our fitting. And that ends up with higher than anticipated static pressure, which generally ends up with a duct system that doesn't move the air that we need it to. Or if it does, you got to turn the TV up every time the system comes on because smaller duct, uh, correct airflow or uh, CFM is equal to area times velocity. So if our area is small and we want to maintain CFM, our velocity has to go up. It's math. It's the way it works. Out. This is me doing the math. And this example right here, I had the effective length of a fitting at 700 feet per minute drop to this fitting. 20 was cut in half just by dropping my velocity by 500 feet per minute. Do the math yourself. It's really not that hard. If I can do it, you definitely can do it. And over here, I was kind of surprised when we changed our friction. And when our friction goes up, our effective length goes down, which does make sense if you really ponder it for a while. And I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to let you figure that one out on yourself. I don't know what the next slide is. And it's just the friction rate worksheet. So I'm going to wrap it up with this. Um, Adam is the one who asked me about this. And like I say in all these videos, if you guys have questions, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to do a real quick one on this. So with that, I want to say take care and I hope to see you soon.